Hey guys, what's up? Producer engineer Alex Scott here with Concertini.com. Thanks so much for checking out another one of our review videos. Um, today we are looking further at the Slate Everything bundle. Specifically, we're going to take a look at some of the mastering plugins that are available when you get the Everything bundle. Do a bit of a review of them, show you guys what they sound like, how they work. Um, we've done another video on the dynamics units in this bundle, um, all the compressors and stuff within the virtual mix rack, which is one of my favorite things that's included in the Slate bundle. Um, and we're also doing a video about the reverbs and other effects plugins that come with the bundle. Um, it's a really, really all inclusive bundle. So it's a great solution if you're looking for just one kind of set of plugins that are going to take care of most of your everyday mixing and production needs. Um, but right now, again, I want to take a look at some of these mastering plugins because it does come with some really cool stuff there as well. Now, you can see I've got a session pulled up here in Studio One. This is a track from a record called None Such Palace that I've been working on with my good friend Veronique Van Pelt. She's an amazing singer-songwriter based here in Colorado. Um, and this is kind of a modern pop, indie pop kind of record that, that we've been doing. Very, very pleased with how it's come out. Um, this particular tune is called So Reached My Heart. Um, and it is fully mixed, but not mastered as of yet. We've got our normal kind of 3 dB of headroom on the whole thing. So I'm just going to be using it to demo a few of these plugins. Now, taking a look at our Slate bundle, we do have a couple really great specialized mastering tools. The first one I want to take a look at is the Slate FGX. Um, now, this is kind of, it's mainly just dynamics is, is what it's focused on. And this is your, you know, it's mastering dynamics. So we've got a really transparent but powerful compressor that then goes into kind of a combination uh, limiter maximizer type unit. And then, of course, a ton of great metering. Now, it's pretty much exactly what you would expect it to be. It's a mastering compressor and limiter. So you start bringing up your ratio here, mess around with your attack and release. It's a compressor. It's pretty much exactly what you would expect. But what I will say about it is it, it's incredibly clean. It's incredibly tight and really does a great job of that really mastering style, um, really transparent, really even uh, compression that's just going to glue your whole track together. Uh, when we get into this more kind of limiting, maximizing section down here, um, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We have a few different options here, and then we can go even a little bit further into the settings. The first thing that we come across is our low punch and detail under this little transients bracket here. And so this is basically controlling the low end punch and then the high end detail on your transients. So if you want your mix to feel like it has more impact um, or, you know, just kind of more grit and character and definition in your transients. This, this is great, especially for like electronic music or anything with really complex rhythms or, you know, a lot of texture in the percussive uh, instruments, whether they're drums or drum machine or something. Um, this is going to be a great tool for that because it allows you to kind of split it into two bands. You've got your low end and you've got your top end and then control the character and the definition of the transients in each of those bands. So, I don't understand what you mean to me. as we crank up that low punch, you can hear a little bit. It's really going to sculpt that the, the, the low end right around that kind of transient you know, or the initial hit of, of each sound. Truth is, I'm still figuring so that's that with, and here's without. Really listen to the kick drum here. It really just brings out a ton of punch on that kick. Now, looking at the other one, the high-end detail on the transients, here you're going to be listening to the snare, shakers. Here's without. And here's with. Again, it's subtle, but that's what mastering is all about. Mastering is really about creating that glue and, you know, that character in your overall track. Um, and this does a great job of really, def you know, helping to define and bring out the punch and the snap in all those high-end transients. 
We have makeup gain that comes after that. Now, here we have dynamic perception, and this gets into more of the kind of master, uh, maximizing side of what this section is doing. Um, and then that combined with this hard to smooth control here, um, that is basically it's, it's determining a lot of things all at once. You know, when normally when we think about compressors and limiters, we have attack and release times and ratios and all this kind of stuff. And those all work together along with the maximization algorithm um, to kind of determine how it's going to bring your overall volume up. Okay. Um, then we do have uh, dither and sealing for the limiter. Um, so, you know, you can, this is where you can set if you're, if you're exporting to say Spotify and they, um, your files shouldn't have any true peaks higher than minus one. You can set that in here. Um, and then you can also change whether it's working in 16 or 24 bits. So very, very handy feature. Great metering after that. Um, we've got some other kind of miscellaneous settings of, of referencing and all that kind of stuff in here. Um, and then of course we have the option of either VU uh, and as well as sort of normal segment metering for everything that you need. Now, one kind of uh, gripe that I have with this is we really don't have any presets here. Um, uh, and maybe I downloaded it wrong or something. I'm not totally sure. Um, but I am not seeing the option for, oh wait, okay, here we go. So we do have a couple of presets in here, but I would love to see, um, some more presets than this. Um, so we have kind of a mastering start, mastering two, hard, loud, smooth, comp, comp two. That's cool, but I would love to see, um, a little bit more in the way of presets. I actually hadn't Hadn't even found those yet. Um, I'm glad there are a couple, but even that is still um, not a ton as far as I'm concerned. Um, I love like in Ozone, I, I use uh, Ozone for a lot of my mastering stuff and they have, there's so many presets for so many kind of different use case scenarios um, where, you know, the, there's a ton of presets that are based around genres. There's presets based around at kind of, you know, different uh App, uh, directions you could take your mastering, so like punchy or, uh, you know, your mastering for CD, mastering for online release. There's a ton of presets in Ozone for that, and I really like that. It speeds up my workflow, um, so I would love to see a few more in here. But in any case, that is FGX. I really, really like how transparent it is, how neutral it is, um, but at the same time, how powerful it is. Um, it's, it's really, really nice um, in terms of just the overall tone and character of it. Um, and a couple little things in there, namely like the lack of presets. And I would love to see maybe some more interesting saturation or EQ options in there as well. But we do have some other things within uh, the Slate Digital Everything Bundle that give us some different approaches to mastering. The next thing that I want to take a look at is the VBC Rack. Okay, this is the Virtual Bus Compressor Rack. And this has a few different applications. Um, you can definitely use it for mastering, or that's the context we're gonna be talking about it in. Um, but you could also very much use it as a bus compressor within your mix. You could use this on the like, drum bus, uh, background vocal bus, you know, buses of like rhythm guitars or something. It's definitely not mastering only, um, but that's, you know, to me is kind of what it's mainly geared for, okay, is being that dynamics part of your mastering chain. So, it, it, and th this is also another plugin that is really recreating a lot of really classic circuits, three classic circuits to be exact. Um, so up top here, the first unit that we have is the FG Gray. And so this is another take on the SSL 4000G VCA bus compressor, okay? It's a classic compressor that was found um, in pretty much all the, the SSL 4000 and 4000G series consoles from back in the 70s and 80s. Now, I actually have a hardware unit that we've talked about on the channel, the Audioscape G Stereo VCA series compressor. Um, it's in my rack over here, uh, and it is a part-for-part -part recreation of that original SSL circuit. Um, it's a phenomenal sounding unit. I love it, or it's a phenomenal sounding unit. I love it and use it all the time. Um, and this is really in that style of compression. So we have stepped controls within this plugin for our uh, attack, our release, our threshold, um, our ratio. Threshold's co uh, continuously variable, sorry. And then we've got... Um, kind of one unit or half unit stepped controls with the ratio. Uh, we do have a high pass side chain. 
um, <clears throat> and then makeup gain and a parallel knob. So this is going to give you that classic SSL glue um, compressor sound, which, you know, again, I have the hardware unit. I love it. Um, and this, this particular plugin does a great job of replicating all the smack and the punch and the glue that you get out of that circuit. Moving down from there, our second compressor, uh, is called the FG Red. And this is a plugin emulation of actually a, a bit of a more unusual piece of kit, um, or hardware device, uh, the Focusrite Red 3 compressor, which is not, really like a, you know, it's not a super legendary unit, but one of the, the biggest people who uses that unit in their chain is Chris Lord Algae, um, who's a legendary, you know, many, has won many Grammys, all kinds of awards. He's worked on a ton of huge records. He's a very famous mixing engineer. Um, and he's a huge fan of the Red 3. And I know Stephen Slate, who runs Slate Digital, and uh, Chris are, are buddies, and I'm sure they know each other. They both, they're both plug-in designers. Um, as well as being great engineers. And so I think that that's where Stephen Slate got the inspiration to include this emulation in here. And it's it's an, a very interesting compressor. It's pretty, you know, kind of typical as far as um, its controls, threshold, uh, ratio, attack, release, makeup gain. We do have a drive control here to add a little bit of transformer saturation, which is, which is a nice feature. Um, we also have an auto release function. Um, uh, just like we do here on the SSL, um, which, you know, basically just makes the release program dependent, um, just a different release characteristic, which is, which is really, really nice. We do have another high pass filter. Um, and then of course the parallel mix. Now I, I like this one because of the drive, you can get it a little bit grittier than normal. And on its own, the red three is a pretty transparent circuit. Um, but the way that I look at this, this virtual bus compressor, rack is actually using maybe a couple of different compressors in line and to me it's i would kind of either pick if i want this ssl flavor and then turn off the fg red or if i would want the fg red flavor again a little bit more transparent or then you can drive it and get more saturation out of it i would kind of pick one of those two and then cascade them into our last unit here and this is the fg mu it's my personal favorite because I am a huge fan of the sound of the compressor that this is going after, and that is the Fairchild 670, arguably the most legendary compressor in the history of pro audio. Um, the Fairchild 670 was designed in the 1950s. The original unit has something like 20 tubes and 10 transformers in it. It's like six rack units. It's massive. It is bomb-proof. It was designed as a kind of broadcast limiter originally, but is nowadays revered as one of the best-sounding compressors of all time. Had the option to work in mid-side, which uh, our plug-in here faithfully recreates. Um, and it just, you know, it was used on a ton of incredibly cool records, including a lot of the early Beatles stuff. Um, it's just an amazing sounding compressor. I've never gotten to see or use one in person because they're insanely rare and usually cost between thirty and forty thousand dollars for an original vintage piece of hardware, which is just silly. Um, but I have heard some hardware uh, kind of clones or recreations of the circuit and used a ton of the plug-in versions. And it's just you know it's a it's an all tube compressor. It's a very new compressor, so it has this really interesting smooth. Uh, compression characteristic to it, and this uh, FG Mu here does a great, great job of Each replicating that. So if we start to play with it a little bit, maybe push the input a little bit more, pull in our threshold. And it just, it, it gives this amazing amount of just sparkle and kind of sheen to your mix, just, just running it through it, just like, just like a real tube unit would. So here's without. You do something to the way I see and here's with. Never look the same at that mm. color. And just has this incredible way of like, yeah, bringing out those upper mids and just making the whole thing sound magical in a really, really cool way. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, we do have a mid-side option here so that we can 
um, separately control our mid, you know, the mid part of our mix and then the stereo information in our mix. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with mid side processing, it's a very cool way to work, way to work. And you can really uh, bring out a lot of width when we put it into this mode and unlink it. You can really push out that stereo information um, using mid side and the fact that you can compress them differently is really, really cool. And then, of course, we do have our mix over here um, in case we want to push this a little bit harder and then do a parallel compression kind of a thing with it. So overall, three fantastic compressors that all sound really nice in their own right. But this is how I kind of look at it, um, you know, in terms of a mastering tool is you can you know, you could use all three compressors if you really wanted to, or you could pick just one. But I do like using one of these two VCA compressors as kind of the transparent uh, element or maybe setting it up, um, you know, kind of treating it like you would treat two compressors on a vocal using a peak limiter and then something to just ride and even out the, some, the signal. That's totally something you can do in mastering as well. And this is a great way to be able to do that, kind of pick your SSL or your focus right as your first stage of compression and then bring in that big fat magic warmth of the Fairchild as your second stage. So very, very, very cool unit here. We do have a few more, uh, come on, uh, presets here. And, you know, again, th this is what I would like to see in that FGX, just in case anybody from Slate is is listening, is, you know, we have a whole set of presets for each of these different units. Um, and even then, it's a few more uh, than we see in that FGX. So I'm not sure why that one is so scant on presets. Um, but overall, a really, really great rack of compressors. Very versatile. You can use them in a lot of different situations but ultimately really great for mastering. Now, the last uh, real dedicated mastering tool that we have in the Everything Bundle is the Air EQ from IOSIS. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I, IOSIS is kind of part of the whole Slate brand, um, kind of a sister company, so to speak. And this is a really powerful, kind of traditionally styled uh, five band, or I guess seven band technically when you count the shelves or the, the high and low cuts, um, fully parametric mastering style EQ with a couple of interesting features. Now, obviously, we've got our five main bands. You can bring them in using these buttons here. And then we have a low cut and a high cut filter. Oops. And a high cut filter, right? Um, so pretty typical in terms of the layout that you would expect from an EQ like this. Um, <clears throat> But one really interesting thing that it has is this kind of character uh, here. And this basically affects the shape of our EQ curve. Let me, let me show you what I mean. You do something. So let's say we want to boost our high mids. Let's say we want to give some, um, you know, whatever, uh, 2 to 5K. Why not? Not that that's a super musical choice here, but... This character, what it does is if, if we look right here, look at the actual curve of the EQ, it changes the shape of the bell. When we move it towards water, I'm not sure where they came up with the names for these, but water, we have this really interesting kind of flat um, peak here in our EQ. And then as we push it to neutral and then all the way up to fire, the Q kind of narrows, the, the width of, of the band that we're affecting narrows and we get a much more pronounced peak. Now, I definitely hear that like moving it more towards fire, more towards this extreme peak, definitely gives you a sharper, more kind of exacting sound. And combined with, you know, your normal cue controls over here, you can get real, real surgical with it if you need to do any frequency notching. But then moving it towards this water just gives you a very gentle, it sounds kind of Pultec-ish to my ears. Um, it's a much more gentle approach to EQing. And so you can kind of start to do some, some really gentle, um, 
more to tone sculpty type stuff as opposed to that really surgical kind of notch based EQing. Um, but really beautiful sounding EQ. It's got a little bit more character than I was expecting. You know, when you open it, you think, oh, it's a it's a mastering EQ. You know, it's it's probably very transparent and very precise. And it is very precise, but it does have some vibe to it. And you can control that vibe here. Um, you know, between the, these uh, fire and water, you know, this character knob, and you've got some other cool options in here um, to kind of change how the circuit sounds beyond just what you're actually doing in the EQ. And then last, you do have this strength over here, which is like a, you know, creates a parallel EQ circuit. We've done a lot with parallel compression, and Slate offers a ton with parallel compression in a lot of their other, you know, Dynamics plugins. But in here, we have a parallel EQ, so you can push the EQ a little bit farther and then pull that strength back a little bit and kind of blend the best of both signals. Um, so if you are pushing and pulling stuff in your EQ and you like it overall, but there's a, you know maybe some harsh spots that you can't iron out, you can try bringing that strength back um, to blend that original signal back in and really you know make it feel very, very natural. So overall, a really powerful and cool mastering EQ. So that is pretty much everything that uh, I would classify as a true mastering tool in the everything bundle. Um, and while, you know, there is not a ton of different units and modules like you see in some other bundles, the units that Slate has here are incredibly powerful. They sound really, really great. I do like the fact that a lot of them are really based around, if not specific vintage units like that, you know, the Fairchild and the virtual bus compressor rack. Um, they're very much in the style of vintage units like uh, like those. You know what I mean? I mean, that Air EQ could, you know, could be swapped out with a lot of really classic, you know, like from GML or companies like that, really great classic analog mastering EQs. It's a very similar approach. So if you've used analog gear in the past, you're going to find these plugins really familiar and easy to work with. Um, but if you're mainly just a plugin guy, you're going to find some of those more plugin specific features like having parallel right in every single plugin, um, having presets, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's going to make your workflow real, real easy. But what do you guys think of the Slate Everything bundle, specifically the mastering tools? Are there other tools in there that you use for mastering? Uh, what other plugins do you guys prefer for mastering, if not the Slate Digital stuff? I'd love to hear whatever you guys may think in the comments down below. Definitely let me know. Love hearing from you guys. Uh, as always, my name is Alex Scott with ConcertDini.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one.